Hello, my dear gardening friends. Roses in containers. What a lovely way to grow those beautiful plants in our gardens and enjoy those wonderful blooms. In this video, I'm going to, to focus on care of roses in containers, potting, repotting roses, fertilizers, which we should use in containers, moving roses for winter, um, soil requirements in roses, and generally what roses are good to grow in those containers. So stay tuned and let's talk. So the question is, are roses good to grow in containers? Yes, they are. There are plants which absolutely will not tolerate any uh, constricted space, especially container space, but roses fit marvelously and they bloom well in containers. The reason why people grow roses in containers would be the following. Sometimes people garden on a small lot. They like uh, the flexibility of moving pots uh, wherever they can enjoy those roses. Some people have only access to the balcony and they want to enjoy the blooms. And that's a great way to have a nice quiet corner with a green blooming companion on your balcony. Some people have a very unsuitable soil to grow roses. And the way out of it would be to grow roses in raised beds or containers. By unsuitable soil, I mean roses thrive uh, ideally, the roses, uh, roses thrive in the soil with uh, from 6 to 6.5 pH and uh, 7 is considered neutral soil. So roses love to have a little bit uh, on a, an acidic side. Uh, my soil here is neutral and since I use a lot of uh, well uh, composted cow manure and cow manure uh, has a tendency, some of it has a tendency to bring soil into acidic side. I think that's a way is great for my soil and my roses are thriving here. But for those people who don't know their soil and their roses for whatever reason are not thriving, my advice would be just go ahead and do the test on your soil and see where you stand. Because if soil uh, levels are too high into alkalinity or too low into acidity, then your rose roots are not able to pick the nutrients from the soil. Nutrients are there, you are going to put fertilizers into that soil, but because your soil is too acidic or too alkaline, rose roots is not picking those uh, uh, elements and not absorbing them into the system and that can be one of the reasons why roses are not thriving or any plant are not thriving on that soil. So we diverged into that topic. So back to why people would plant roses. So again, if soil is not suitable, you plant your rose in raised beds where you can bring your own soil and you plant roses in containers where again you can bring your own soil. Size of pots. Here we are, you brought your baby rose into the garden, either it's a potted or it's bare root rose, and the tendency is to plant it right away into the big pot where you're planning to have that rose uh, in your garden, if you're not planning to plant that rose into the soil outside. And uh, there is a tendency among beginner gardeners just to do a big pot right away, plant your baby rose into a big pot, leave it there, and you're all set. You don't need to replant it from bigger pot to bigger pot. I would caution you against that because uh, if a uh, rose actually is not um, really flourish very well, a baby rose in a very big pot, there are several reasons for that. The first reason, the first reason is since the soil in the pot, in the big pot with a baby rose where the roots are not there so spread so all the soil uh, capacity, that soil has a tendency not to drain very well and not to dry very well quickly. So you're prone to have all sorts of disease issues uh, with your baby rose in a big pot. The best advice would be to uh, upgrade pots with your rose growing. So if you brought your baby rose, let's say in one gallon pot, and you see that roots are coming from the holes of the pot, that's the reason 
uh, that's a, one way to tell if rose outgrew the pot. Now bigger pot should be at least twice as wide as the original pot. So your next pot would be wider and deeper. And what I would do, I wouldn't worry about taking the soil out between the roots, uh, reporting it um, with special requirements. I will just uh, put the smaller pot into a bigger pot, fill the diameter empty space with soil, and then lift up the pot, pick up the rose from the existing pot and just put it in. Of course, if you see that roots of the rose are very restricted and they are traveling around uh, the pot searching for nutrients, I would scratch them a little bit, I would break them up. This way you encourage rose roots to go out instead of continuous that circling motion. Uh, there are a lot of pots on the market right now, surprisingly, which don't have a drainage hole. And how can you grow plants in the pot without proper drainage? That's a, a suicide for the plant, especially for the rose. So uh, one drainage hole is good, several are better. If you can create uh, several drainage holes, that would be great. If you can drill them, you have a plastic uh, container, that would be great. Suitable roses for containers. There are wonderful 25 varieties which David Austin is offering on his website for container growing. And why is that? Only 25 out of all other varieties he's offering. Well, there can be several reasons. The first reason is that some roses, when they mature, when they are going into their third, fourth year of growth in our gardens, they tend to have this leggy bottom. For example, my Lady of Shalott is having that, which is not a big deal, I don't mind it, but if you're growing your rose in container, you, you ideally you don't want to have this pot, bare legs, foliage with blooms. You want to have pot and foliage with blooms. So there are roses which are keeping the foliage all the way to the bottom during the mature age of the rose. At the beginning, when the roses are babies, they, are, they have this lush, beautiful foliage, leaves all the way to the bottom of the plant. But when the rose starts to mature, some of them do keep the foliage well at the bottom and some of them not. So here is the list of established rose varieties, which are good at keeping all the foliage to the bottom. And David Austin is among those roses. And here is the list of varieties, which are not particularly good in it. They tend to have bare feet uh, after the third year of their growth. And um, another thing I read, which was very interesting, that hybrid teas uh, go very well in containers and they actually flower better in containers and they are not as prone to diseases. But hybrid teas are prone to bare legs in containers. So these varieties probably are better suited to the middle territory of the border where their bare legs would be covered by other plants. Of course, you can do the same with uh, a rose in a container. You can put other containers in front of the rose or you can underplant the rose with little companion plants, which will uh, shade, which will do two different functions. It will shade the soil around the rose roots and also it will be looking very well and it will somehow hide the bare uh, root of roses. Soil in our containers for roses. I remember when I just started gardening, I said to myself, what's the difference between the usual soil and uh, potted soil, which I have to go to the store, spend money buying it. Uh, I might as well just grab soil from the garden and put it into the pot and here I go. Well, I would highly advise you not to do that because there are reasons for it. The garden soil is usually not suited for pots because it cannot withstand the daily watering routine, the, the compacting force of water which comes into that pot every day, and sometimes it can have worms. I remember when I did that for my uh, potted plants, I remember when I was reporting them, I saw these worms just going in circles in that pot. And I'm not sure if it's good or bad, but I feel bad for those worms just doing these circles. And if the pot is really small, those wormies can do damage to roots because they have nowhere to, grow, to, to go. They're just doing circles in the pot. So if garden soil is not good for it, so which soil is good? The easiest way out of it, instead of mixing your own soil, the easiest way, you go to your garden center and you buy a good organic potting soil. And that soil will have three good characteristics. It will drain well, it will retain moisture well, 
and it would be light so it will not compact under the daily watering. And just keep in mind, we are watering every day, so that soil can be really compacted. So the, the, another requirement of the potting soil, it has to be light to withstand that daily watering routine in our pots. Potting and repotting. Well, I already addressed the issue of repotting. So repotting should be when you see uh, the rose roots coming out from the holes, it means rose is ready for a bigger container. And usually the bigger container should be half the width as uh, the previous container. But what if you receive your rose as bare root and you want to pot it in your, in your pot uh, and you want to keep it in your container? Uh, the treatment of that would be the same as if you brought a bare root and you're ready to plant it into your soil in your garden. So treat your container as the potting hole which you dig in the ground. And believe me, I was there. I remember I would be shoveling that rose roots into the hole to fit them because the roots, surprisingly, the roots of the bare root roses, when they come into our gardens, they're pretty wide and pretty deep. They grow into this fan shape. And you need really to have a big size container, at least five gallons, to accommodate that width. Because you don't want to have the small container, you have bigger roots, and what do you do? You just shovel those roots in, you bend them, you trim them, you twist them. No, 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 we can't do that. When we see the rows of this size of the roots, we have to have a container of this size to accommodate those roots. So we will put at the bottom, uh, I read a lot of interesting articles about uh, putting pebbles at the bottom of the container. A lot of people advise not to do that now. The best thing would be to put just a piece of newspaper or tissue at the bottom, which will decompose in time and drainage holes will be open. And the reason for that is some people who did uh, experiments on how water goes through different mediums with different levels of drainage, they say that water doesn't go through one medium to another, which drain of a, on a different schedule. So we have soil, which drains fairly slowly, and then we have pebbles, which drain very fast. So water has difficulties passing that, uh, that barrier. And that's why uh, now the general consensus is people don't recommend to put pebbles into the pots. So if you put your... Um, your newspaper or tissue at the bottom to hide the uh, holes. Don't worry, the soil is not going to fall out after that uh, newspaper decomposes. Uh, the soil will settle in, the microbes will do their job, and you wouldn't be losing soil through those holes. Then you make sure that you spread the root system of the rose well. I usually like to make a hill and put the rose nicely on the hill. You fill the container halfway, you water it thoroughly to eradicate any water pockets. What I like to do also is I would like to top that uh, um, potting medium with uh, manure or other compost, whatever you have, natural organic stuff. I like to do uh, well composted cow manure, which is easily available in my area, and I also make my own compost in the garden. So whatever organic stuff you have, you can use on top the layer. And uh, I would use also on top of that, I will use a layer of uh, shredded bark. Since shredded bark has excellent abilities to uh, cool down the roots of the plant. Growing container roses in cold areas. Here is me who is growing in cold uh, area of borderline zone 6-7 where we have cold winters. How do you do that? What is the temperature where you absolutely have to bring roses inside the protected area? So here we go. Where you have temperatures dipping below 28 degrees Fahrenheit, I believe it's minus 2 Celsius, for seven to eight hours, so, so basically overnight, when you have temperatures go below 28 and you have your five gallon container, rose container, you have to bring it inside because that, those freezing conditions will damage the root system of the plant. Now, if you have a bigger container, something like this, I think this container is probably, I would say um, 15 gallons, 10, 15 gallons. If you have this container, of course, bigger containers can withstand the cold snap so much better. 
But if you have something like this and your temperature is going to go below 25 degrees Fahrenheit again for let's say 12, 24 hours, so basically for a day and night, it means that your rose might be damaged. And if you don't want to risk losing your rose, you have to move it into the protected area, let's say garage. And here we go, moving something like this into the garage. That's why I don't grow roses in the container. Uh, there are two reasons for it. Uh, we have three teenagers and they have very busy lives. So I'm not there every day to water my rose and roses do need much more care in containers than just growing into the, in the garden. And second, and second, because I have three teenagers and they are busy with bikes and spike balls and rollerblades and balls and whatnot, my garage is literally filled with all sorts of stuff and roses cannot go there. That's as simple as that. So if you grow roses in the colder area, you have to know that you have to have a place where you keep them in winter because you don't want to lose them in containers. And second of all, you have to have the equipment to move these heavy containers into the um, garage or wherever you're storing your roses. So that's another thing. You know what, when I'm filming, these crows are flying all over my head and just making a lot of noises. My apologies for that. But here we are talking about fertilizers, very important topic for roses in containers. Since roses in containers grow in restricted area, they do depend on us much more than if they would be growing in the open soil. And different people do different fertilizers. I will tell you my way. Well, I can't tell you because I'm not growing roses in containers, but I will tell you what I would do. I do love natural fertilizers, but natural fertilizers are on a weaker side. They generally improve the condition of the soil. So uh, I if I would grow roses in containers, I would go and use artificial fertilizers to provide that rose with all the uh, necessary things the rose needs to grow. I would stay away from uh, um, granular fertilizers, uh, fast release fertilizers, because they can burn the roots of the rose. I would go with something slow release, uh, which releases very slowly. And I would not use fertilizers on baby roses, since baby roses' roots are very sensible to any type of fertilizers. What I would recommend for any rose, baby or established roses in the pots, I would recommend fish uh, fertilizer or any other liquid fertilizer, which is not as uh, punishing to the roots of the rose, and rose gets those uh, substances right away. Fish fertilizer, it's stinky. If you have a balcony and you have a rose on the balcony and you have your neighbor's window right near yours, I don't think you would want to use your fish fertilizer. Uh, I'm tempted, every year I do it. I stay one year, I stay away from fish fertilizer, another year I use it. So I go back and forth with it because I forget next year how, fertilizer, how fish fertilizer smells. I don't use that fertilizer in the front of my garden. I use it at the back only because I don't want people, my neighbors walking by and smell the fertilizer. And a lot of people don't know what it is, but they know that that stinks. And uh, I just don't want to be a stinky lady on the block. But that's a great way, a natural way, uh, fertilizer with, which is packed with all sorts of micro elements to put into the container with your roses. At the back of our house, we have this deck and deck has uh, artificial wood on it and it has a tendency to heat up very quickly. So in a very hot sunny day, when we got, uh, go outside, literally my, my bare feet can almost burn because the deck is so hot. So the same happens to the containers which are sitting there day and night on that deck. My containers at the back, I usually grow sedums in them and I have bigger pots. They have a tendency to heat less quickly than smaller pots. Um, so if you are planning to grow your roses on the deck where there is a strong radiating heat from the wall or the radiating heat from the floor, I would advise you to not to use black containers. As we know, black attracts heat. You can put, if you don't want to repot your rose and your rose is growing in the black containers, I see people do just buy a bigger container, lighter color, and just put that black container inside. This way there is some sort of a water, um, air pocket between two containers. The lighter color container is reflecting the sun and your rose is somewhat sheltered from that radiant heat. 
Another way to do is uh, to plant companion plants, not aggressive with roses, for example, vinca or ivy. It, they will have, both of them will have nice trailing effect or protect the bottom of the rose with other low-growing containers, containers with low-growing plants in them. We, uh, are we have to remember that plants in the garden generally like cold, cool roots of the soil and sun on their foliage. I tried to cover all the topics in this video which could, I could uh, uh, think about, but if I miss something, please uh, drop me a line and let me know, and we will address those issues too. Uh, please do support my channel, please do subscribe, and I will see you next time. Happy gardening!